Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to show you how to make soap. This is a recipe that I created myself. It's super easy, it turns out really, really good. I think it's the best cold process soap recipe that there is. Cold process soap making is super fun. It can be a little intimidating when you first start thinking about doing it, but once you jump in and get started, you'll see it's so doable and so fun. So let's get started. So to make cold process soap, you need your oil ingredients, you need some water, you need some lye. You do need lye when you're making soap, otherwise all you'll have is oils and that doesn't work to wash, obviously. You need the lye to convert those oils into actual soap, but it doesn't have to be scary. I'll walk you through all of that. So you're gonna start off by weighing out your oil ingredients. For this, you'll need a scale that goes to two decimal places at least. I'll have one linked down below that I have been using and really liking that does go to the right number of decimal places. And you're gonna need something to melt any solid oils, and this recipe does use a couple. So for that, I like to use a crock pot. It's just really easy. You can do the mixing step in there. You could also do a pot on your stove on a really low heat too if you want. So I'm gonna start by zeroing out my container here that I'm gonna be measuring oils into. And all of the weights are going to be in ounces. I'm gonna have a link to where you can go to my website and get the full written recipe and printable recipe card for this cold process soap recipe so that you can easily have that and make this yourself. The first thing that I'm going to be adding is some coconut oil. You can use either either virgin coconut oil or refined. Usually for soap making, I will go with the refined version just because it ends up being more cost effective. And in my research, I learned that it has the best soaping properties as well, but you can use either one. So I'm going to be weighing out 6.4 ounces of coconut oil. And then I'm just going to add that once I've weighed it out into my crock pot so that it can melt. And then the next ingredient is going to be 6.4 ounces of olive oil. Both the coconut oil and the olive oil, I like to use organic. So if that's what you like to stick to, you can choose that as well. The nice thing about making your own soap is that you have complete control over all the ingredients so you can choose those different things to make it just how you want it. The next ingredient that I'm going to add is my all-time favorite ingredient for soap making, and that is grass-fed tallow. This adds wonderful benefits to the finished soap. It adds really great skin benefits for moisture moisturizing, adds gentle cleansing properties, and really creamy lather. And one of my favorite things about it is that it adds a really nice hardness to the bars so that they don't melt away easily in the shower. It makes them nice and hard and long lasting, as well as those other benefits that I mentioned. I'm going to add 19.2 ounces of tallow. Once I have that measured out, I'm going to add that to the crock pot also, and then just let, obviously the olive oil is already liquid, but the tallow and the coconut oil need to melt and become liquid. I don't want my crock pot too hot. Put it on usually the keep warm or the low setting if I'm gonna keep an eye on it. What we want is for the oils to become completely liquid and then reach 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So we don't want them any hotter than that. So I'm just going to let those melt gently. And if you're wondering what the different ingredients do, the olive oil adds some really nice conditioning and moisturizing properties, some creamy lather. The coconut oil adds really abundant lather and some cleansing properties. And then the tallow, like I said, adds the really nourishing and hydrating benefits to the skin. And then the rich creamy lather and nice hardness to the bar that makes it very nice and long lasting so it won't just melt away. You can definitely get way more complicated soap recipes than this, but I find that these three simple basic ingredients are perfect because they have such great benefits. They're easy to find and source. Keeps it really simple and doable and they have fantastic benefits. It really turns out as a very nice soap. Now that the oils are all completely melted, I'm just gonna make sure 
that they are no hotter than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then since they are, I'm gonna go ahead and take this insert out of the crock pot so that they don't continue to be warmed beyond that. So they're melted 100 degrees Fahrenheit and the next step is to mix the lye water and then add that to the oil. So there are some safety precautions that you'll want to be aware of when it comes to mixing lye and water together. You want to have some nice tall gloves, you want eye protection, and when you actually mix the lye to the water, you wanna do that outdoors. I have weighed out my bucket of water. You wanna make sure that you choose something that's okay with heat. So this is a sturdy plastic bucket that I use for mixing the lye water. I have my water in there. Again, it's by weight, so it's 12.16 ounces of water. And since I have a little helper here, I didn't wanna leave this sitting around near him, but this is the lye, so I just put it in one of these disposable cups. And I have 4.4 ounces weighed out in this cup. Now, the order that you mix the lye and water together is really important. You would never want to pour the water into the lye because that would bubble up a lot and create sort of an explosion, which isn't a good idea. So you can remember it by the the snow falls on the lake. So you're going to be pouring the lye onto the water always. So let's take this outside and I'm gonna show you mixing up the lye water. So you can see I'm outside here. I have my safety gear on. I'm pouring the lye into the bucket of water and then I'm just stirring it. You'll see that it will turn cloudy and then it will turn clear. It's also going to become very hot and that's all perfectly normal. So you're gonna mix it until you see that the lye is completely dissolved into the water. And then I'm going to go and set a timer for 10 minutes. I'm going to let the lye water sit outside for 10 minutes and then after that we'll go on to our next step. You do wanna make sure that kids and pets and everything are away from you and away from the lye water while you're working with it, just as a safety precaution. Once the lye water has sat outside for 10 minutes, it's time to bring it in and combine it with the oils. So I'm just gonna carefully pour the lye water into the oils. And then the next step is just going to be mixing the lye water with the oils. The easiest way to do that is with an immersion blender. You can do it by hand, but it's a lot faster and easier if you do have an immersion blender. So I'm just going to start mixing kind of in a figure eight pattern, and then you're gonna see that the mixture will start to thicken. What we're looking for is for the mixture to come to something called trace. And that's when it's thick enough to where it's like a light pudding consistency and where you can lift the mixture and put it back on itself. So pour some of it or drizzle some of it on top of itself and you can see it sit on itself. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get to that point. So now we're already there. So you can see when you lift some up and drizzle it on itself or just draw it through the mixture, you can see the mixture on itself. It's not so liquid that it just is all smooth. You can see it's thick enough that it can sit on itself. And then at this point, you can either leave it as a plain unscented soap or you can add essential oils to it. You have a bunch of different options when it comes to essential oils for soap making. You do want to make sure that you're choosing something that's strong enough that it will come through well. I find that citrus type oils are usually not strong enough to come through very well in the finished soap, but something like lemongrass or peppermint or something like lavender works well. So something strong enough. I'm gonna be using lemongrass. And for this recipe, I'm going to add three tablespoons of essential oil. And then I'm just gonna stir by hand with my spatula to combine those essential oils. From here, you can customize it further. You can add something like dried flowers or herbs sprinkled along the top of the soap once it's in the mold. You can add something natural for color. There's a lot of different possibilities. I usually just keep it pretty basic since those ingredients are so nice on their own and just add essential oils and we're always really happy with it. So once those essential oils are mixed in, it's time to pour it into the mold. This recipe makes the right size of soap for a two pound soap mold like this. And you can see this one has been through a lot of use, but it lasts a long time. 
I'm going to have all of the ingredients and supplies and everything linked in the description box down below so you can easily find it and make this yourself. But you do have more options when it comes to molds too. You can get the kind that are like little cavities with different shapes or little bar shapes. This loaf type is my favorite because then you get a nice big loaf of soap and then you can slice it with a ridged slicer and I'll show you that once we get to that step. So all you're gonna do is pour the soap mixture into the mold. So we're just gonna carefully pour the mixture into the mold. I like to tap it on the table a little bit just to make sure that the soap mixture is settled down in there and there's not any air bubbles or pockets. Okay, just smooth it out like that. And then I put some wax paper on the top. And then you can wrap it in a towel if you want to encourage it going through something called gel phase and have it cool more slowly. That can be helpful if you're adding things like colorings and stuff like that, but it's not necessary. So you can just let it sit. You wanna let it sit in the mold for 24 hours and then we're going to slice it into bars. So I'll show you that step once it's ready. Once the 24 hours is up, I just carefully remove the soap from the mold. First I take the silicone insert out of the wooden box and then carefully peel back the silicone. And then that leaves me with a nice loaf of soap. I use my ridged slicer. I cut off both ends of the loaf first just so that I can have ridges on all of the soap bars. I always save these ends and we still use them. You could also just leave the ends smooth, whatever you want to do. And then I cut the loaf in half and then each of those pieces in half and each of those pieces in half so that I end up with eight bars of soap total. And then I'm gonna put the bars of soap into a cardboard box, making sure that there's plenty of airflow around each bar. And then I'm just going to let these cure. You do need to let cold processed soap cure because the lye needs to finish converting the oils into soap. If you were to use it too soon, it could cause irritation on your skin. So you wanna let these cure in a place with good ventilation, dry place for four to six weeks. Six weeks is ideal, but you can start using them as soon is four weeks. All right, I hope that you enjoyed seeing how to make cold processed soap using my favorite recipe that I think is the best cold processed soap that there is. I hope that you give it a try. Be sure and check out that description box for links to where you can find all of the ingredients and supplies so you can make it yourself, as well as the link to the written recipe and printable recipe card. Also check out that description box for links to free eBooks and other goodies. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would enjoy seeing it. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.